Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me. We're on episode number 43 of Let's Play EU4 as Granada. So we started off as a three province miner, we're kicking butt. I think we're gonna go with the taxes, because I like how much of a tax modifier we're already building up. It makes crappy provinces into pretty good provinces. Plus, um, it just seems like a good idea. And I like to get organized construction too, since we've got so many buildings I want to make. So we'll take that, it's fine. And probably not going to be doing any more defensive ideas for quite a while. I really just wanted military drill, which is fine. And I guess we will be taking the uh, this thing. Doesn't really give us too much yet. Maybe we maybe we just wait on this one in case we can lose more piety and get get rid of that naval disarmament penalty. Down to five days here. Aztecs are begging with me to stop attacking them, which we're going to ignore. Natives have lost some ferocity. We only have two colonies right now. Did they actually kill this whole colony? Damn it, they did. Peasants are definitely causing lots of problems right now. But we will make do. Oh my goodness. Crossing penalty into the hills. We have a one value tactics advantage. We should still win, but man, that is really like the best case scenario for them. This should cripple their their willingness to fight. They're probably going to get a ton of war exhaustion from this. Two. Well, and more would have been better. We'll just continue to power on through. I think we're going to go back up to full maintenance, though. Lose piety. Yes, please. I think we want to just make a, a couple more grain things that are in this trade node. Because the more we boost up this trade node, the better. This one kind of is worthless to me. All that we're doing in this node is just transferring trade power back upstream, so that's kind of sad. Even though we have 94% of the trade power in this, maybe it would make more sense to actually collect from trade here instead of letting that three gold go away. Because right now we just got a guy here a merchant here, and all he's really doing is boosting the value of this money by 2.8%. So yeah, we don't want you here. I want you to collect trade in Timbuktu. Is he there? Nope, still not showing him being there. I know I turned off the merchant. Why is he free? I told you to collect from trade. Oh. I didn't tell him to do it. That would explain it. Alright, so now even though we have um, a huge penalty because we're collecting from trade not in capital, we're like the only person with any trade power here except for Tunisia. So we're actually collecting quite a bit of money from that now. You know, it makes up Another 3.5 gold per month. Which works for me. Very difficult for us to reinforce out here.
but I want this big vassal. I think it's going to work, and I think it's going to be great. It's a great idea. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Not. Um, pretty poorly reinforced at the moment, but... That didn't take very long. Down to three days now. Wow. The tactics difference is huge. The war exhaustion helps. Their prestige is going negative because we keep beating them in battles. On their side, it takes them 39 days. Might even consider going up to four colonies again. Because what are we really spending the money on right now? Just granaries? Nah, granaries just seem like a really good move to me, don't, don't you think? Like, let's compare some of the granaries where we've got them. Farm estate, okay? So, like, these ones already have it. So, Oyo is making more trade value for the node, plus the goods produced is doubled, which increases production. Well, you know, it kind of all multiplies together. So compare Oyo to, like, this one, which also makes grain. Just seems like a good idea. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep on making granaries. We're gonna become the leading... We're gonna get that darn bonus for... Grain. Land force limits. We're gonna get a market share of 20%. And it's gonna be awesome. Sorry, Aztecs. It's nothing, nothing personal. More grain. <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's just that you have all this land and we need it. And I'd really like to, like, ruin the rest of your... I want you even more war exhausted so I can siege you even quicker. Ooh, and it's your capital. Taking your capital will help out with war exhaustion. Okay, what can we do? Um, our relationship with the Swahili is capped out. We can annex you four more years. Colonies. You are doing protection duty. Protection duty. Why don't we create a new unit? We'll go three and two, make it six. Go to Gurma. We'll recall from here, send to there. We'll go up to four colonies. They've actually managed to breach the walls. How dare you? More money, as always. More war exhaustion. Just further helps with our siege speed. That's why I'm. It's what the only, like the only reason I'm really chasing their army down because the higher we get that war exhaustion, the easier it is to siege things. And I'm, I'm thinking it's possible we could even get it down to two day siege ticks, which is of course insane. And at this point. It might make sense to just split up the army now. The Aztecs are not nearly as large in a normal playthrough as they are in a CK2 export, where they're huge at the start of the game. So they're not going to extend much further from here.
I don't even think they could siege this if they really wanted to. So we'll just split up, speed this process along. Lose piety! Yay! Negative 65, that's great. That means our income is going up, up, up. Damn Aztecs, taking back my land. I'd like to just end this this war, or sorry, this video, and then... And then we can see if this works. I, I don't really see any reason why we can't fully vassalize them and then make, you know, fully annex them and then make them do a vassal. Call for peace. The war is won, and your people tire of your continued occupations. They cry out for peace. So that's going to get worse and worse the longer we let this go. So we do need to speed this up. not very bad yet, but I think each month it'll get a lot worse. Now it's at 0 0.02. 0 0.03. Yeah, it's like every couple months it's going up now. Don't worry, we're about to end it. Game. Relax. Okay, 100%. So, we just want to fully annex you, because you're dumb. That is uh, a lot of prestige. That is a lot of overextension. Or a lot of aggressive expansion, rather. But it's not really going to upset that many people because they're so far away. Like, Portugal is the only one that's really going to know. So we'll just do that. Although, out of curiosity, how much money do you have? None. Good. So yeah, full annexation. Now, if we were to core this stuff... Well, we can't even core. It's too far away. So I think what we do just go ahead and see if it's possible. Your country. Create vassals. Aztec. Alright, so they are now Sunni. They love me. <laughs> we'll just uh, do a royal marriage. They actually won't accept a royal marriage because of the distance between borders. But we'll improve relations with them. And in a, 10 more years, we'll annex the Aztecs, and we'll get free cores on everything. It's too bad this army got exiled by doing that. Putting them on boats, does that make them exiled? Todena. Taudena. Todenai. Gets what? Trade power in the Safi, Safi thing? All we're doing is transferring trade, so it doesn't make sense. Let's do a uh, local tax modifier then. So the question was, does doing that, putting them on boats? Yes, it does. Great. So they're ready to do stuff again. So Castile is uh, no longer at war with the Shawnee, so I think we'll go show them how to do this properly. And we've gained the... Oh, hey, it's the Inca. Let's go attack the Shawnee. I think we have room for one more vassal. <laughs> and we want to do another... Another thing here. Gosh, look at that. Two, these, this is so good. I think I need to. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm going to take a break here. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you again soon.